Hey, what's going on, people, and welcome back to another video. So, it doesn't really matter if you are new to the game or you've been here for a while. The fact is, Battlefield 2042's in-game stats are just crap and literally useless to say the least. One of the things that always makes people confused are ammo types, since they are new to the Battlefield franchise, and back in the day we didn't really have all the suppressors doing different stuff, we didn't have all these ammo types doing their own thing, and it's completely normal for you to feel puzzled. However, your man in 107 is back with yet another video, and a guide actually, to shed some light on the subject of ammo types in Battlefield 2042. This was a highly requested video, and today is the day you get what you wanted, so without further ado, let's break everything down. So let's take a look at what each of these ammo types do independently, and then we compare them to each other. So let's start with the close combat rounds. Looking at the name, it's obviously the ammo type made for close range gunfights. However, some mid range weapons like the LCMG, which is a light machine gun, also offers this ammo type so you can basically customize your weapon. The first thing you should know about this ammo is that it decreases damage per distance and I just want to call it damage from now on. Well, it's close combat ammo and assuming that, you don't really need to go long range, right? That's the logic behind it. Compared to most of the ammo types, close combat offers less muzzle velocity, meaning your bullet speed is decreased. This variable mostly comes into play when you try to hit moving targets at mid or long range. So assuming you only use close combat ammo for close combat, you shouldn't really worry about that. Close combat also offers the highest rate of fire possible for a weapon, at least most of the time. Now if I want to make things a little bit more complicated, TTK also plays a role here. If you don't know what TTK is, simply said, it's the time it takes to kill an enemy with body shots from a certain distance. So distance, damage, and fire rate are determining factors here. Now since close combat rounds provide more fire rate and less damage, TTK will be different from one weapon to another, but in general, close combat ammo gives you faster TTK in close range, but the more you increase the distance, the less the TTK gets and you start to see high power and standard issue ammo types winning the competition. Sometimes close combat ammo gives you even faster reload times as well. Obviously, this is different from one weapon to another, and again, uh, that's why we can't just call it a general fact. So if I want to wrap it up for close combat ammo, it's made for close range only. It decreases the damage and puzzle velocity in most scenarios, but increases the fire rate, giving you faster TTK in close range. Now let's take a look at high power rounds. These rounds are more powerful, faster, and harder hitting, but everything comes at an expense. Most of the times, I like using high power rounds on sniper rifles, in fact, I always play high power when it comes to long range weapons because it gives you what you need in those gunfights. To begin with, high power rounds increase the damage because they are stronger and bigger rounds. In some weapons like the G36 for example, even the magazine used for high power rounds is bigger, so that says it all. On the other hand, muzzle velocity is also increased with these ammo type and in some cases like the sniper rifles for example, the difference is huge and you can't really go back to let's say standard rounds once you get used to the high power. In Battlefield 2042, more muzzle velocity means less bullet drop and the less bullet drop you have as a sniper, the easier it gets to hit targets at longer ranges. Simple as that. However, all of that good stuff comes with lower rate of fire, so you basically gotta sacrifice that to get all the benefits. To summarize the high power rounds, they increase the damage and muzzle velocity since they are stronger and faster traveling rounds, but they decrease the fire rate for balancing it out. Now moving on to standard issue rounds, standard rounds are like a middle line between close combat and high power and they offer balanced performance. They deal more damage than close combat but less than high power, they give you more muzzle velocity compared to close combat but less than high power, and they provide a slower rate of fire compared to the close combat but faster rate of fire compared to high power. In most of the weapons, even the reload time is a middle line between close combat and high power, so all in all, standard issue gives you balanced performance, it's there to basically make a balanced situation between high power and close combat rounds, and in my opinion it's a very important ammo type to balance things out between these ammo types, otherwise people would be only using high power or only using close combat, but standard issue is there to prevent that from happening. Then we've got subsonic ammo, which is a weird ammo type to be honest, the name subsonic says it all. The subsonic ammo is made to travel at velocities below the speed of sound. Obviously, that's not the case in 2042, because they at least give you twice as the speed of sound. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Anyway, this ammo type even performs strange when it comes to damage. Sometimes they are better than the standard issue when it comes to damage per distance, and sometimes they're worse. It really differs from one weapon to another. 
When it comes to muzzle velocity, sometimes they are equal to close combat, but most of the times they offer the slowest velocities possible, and at least that makes some sense because they are supposed to operate below 343 meters per second. When it comes to fire rate, however, sometimes they are equal to close combat, and sometimes they offer slightly lower fire rates. All in all, it's all about the weapon. There's one specific feature of subsonic rounds that make them quite unique, and it's their secret ability to complement suppressors. If you use subsonic rounds with light suppressors, they will make you invisible on the map in any range above 15 meters. And if you use the heavy suppressors with subsonic, you will be completely gone off the radar in any given range. Those numbers are a bit different with the other ammo types. For example, if you use high power and light suppressors, you will be invisible on the minimap in ranges above 30 meters. And if you use standard issue rounds with heavy suppressors, uh, you'll be off the radar in above 15 meters. So you will never be completely off the minimap without using the subsonic rounds. That's the key. These rounds are literally your only way to become a ghost on the minimap. And if you guys want to know how these suppressors work exactly, check the video that pops up on the top right corner because I've explained everything completely. Oh, and I was about to forget. If you guys find this video helpful, if you think the information is informative actually, do make sure to hit the like button so this video gets to other people who are interested in the topic, just like yourself. And if you want more videos like this, guides, news about Battlefield and other FPS games, this channel is your place, so definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. That way, I get something in return. And lastly, we've got armor-piercing rounds. I have no idea why do they even exist in this game, but for some reason they do. They deal damage to all armored vehicles, but they deal less damage to infantry. Their damage drops quickly when it comes to infantry, and they're not really good options if you want to get killed. Honestly, the damage they deal to armor doesn't even tempt you to use them. Their muzzle velocity is as fast as high power most of the times, and the fire rate they provide is the slowest possible in almost all the cases. Probably the only weapon in this game that is worth using armor piercing rounds on is the NTW-50, which is an anti-material sniper rifle. That's a 50 caliber anti-material sniper rifle, and it will make it even stronger against armored vehicles. To wrap it up for the armor-piercing ammo type, it deals damage to vehicles and less damage to infantry. It provides a fast muzzle velocity, mostly as fast as high power, but the fire rate is the slowest possible in most cases. Now, you might know what these ammo types are and what they do right now after watching this video, but you still don't know when to use them. I mean, after all, it all depends on what weapon you want to use. Because of that, I've made a video explaining what weapon stats you need to use and how to utilize it to get the best out of any weapon you want to play. And if you want to watch that video, it will pop up right now on the top right corner. Make sure to give it a look as well. It explains to you a spreadsheet, which includes all the details you need about all the weapons in 2042. I actually use it to make some of these weapon comparison videos, some of these stats videos, and basically teach you a thing or two about how to utilize it and how to use it. Now, to give you a clear comparison between these ammo types, here is a small table that puts all the five different ammo types next to each other. Let's give it a quick review one more time. Close combat ammo is the weakest when it comes to damage drop off per distance, while the high power is the strongest. Armor piercing is also weak in this regard, but standard issue and subsonic provide balanced performance. For muzzle velocity, subsonic and close combat are the slowest, but depending on the weapons, they may be a little bit different. High power and armor piercing have the fastest velocity possible, and finally, standard issue is balanced. For fire rate, Close combat is higher than all, and armor piercing gives you the lowest possible fire rate. High power and subsonic both aren't so good, and the standard issue provides balanced performance again. With all that said, this video comes to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. Make sure to let me know what you think about the video down in the comment section. If you disagree with anything, feel free to say that. And until next time, guys, stay cool.